I just purchased what I believe is the cheapest working cinema camera on the entire internet. Let's go check it out and see what I got. So here it is, Sony FS100U. This is the cheapest cinema camera that I could find on eBay, but it has some issues. Now, these will fix some of the issues, but not all of them, so let's get into that right now. So first things first, these are right here, some accessories that I bought along with this camera. Uh, some things I was missing. First of all, actually this cover right here. So this covers the Sony's proprietary uh, media card slot right here, so they make these like SSD type of things that go into here, flash storage. Uh, but it doesn't have that and it doesn't have a cover. So I ordered this off eBay and it goes right, I believe, right in here. There we go. So there's that, that solves the first problem right there. The missing cover, that's fixed. And this is I believe $20. And also the camera itself, I didn't explain that yet. This camera costed me $375. I'll get more into that in just a second here. But uh, yeah, $375 cinema camera. So anyways, let's get into the rest of the stuff right here. Next up is right here, our cold shoe mounts. This camera did not include a cold shoe mount up top here. There's supposed to be one right there, but of course it's not. So I bought these small rig cold shoe mounts. I'll link these in the description if you wanna check them out. Either way, bought one of those to put up right here. So let's go ahead and install that. So this camera also didn't come with a battery. I actually have it installed now, but that's what these are right here. Uh, got some Power Extra, just some off-brand NPF batteries for it. Also link these in the description if you're interested. But yeah, those are there. It was like 30, I think 30 something dollars for two batteries and a charger. So I got those right there. And obviously one is installed right now. Then also last but not least, this camera didn't have a top handle or a side handle or anything like that. So I ordered a small rig top handle for it. This goes right up top here like that or like that. The only issue is you can't really flip this up all the way when it's like that. And when it's like this, you can't spin it around if you wanna like record yourself or something like that. So that's the only issue with this, but either way, it still works great for a top handle. All right, here we go. This right here is a $375 FS100 cinema camera. What I believe is the cheapest cinema camera within reason on the internet that works. So like I said, it has some issues uh, and I fixed a few of them, including the missing top panel, the missing side panel and the uh, cold shoe mount on top. But it has some other issues that I'm gonna get into right now. So this camera is actually has cracks in the housing right by the sensor, which is pretty sketchy. Uh, you, you don't know if it maybe took a fall right by the sensor and was damaged and cracked. Uh, or you know what happened, especially when it's that close to the sensor. Uh, but like I said, that actually doesn't affect the image quality. It doesn't affect anything. It still works perfect, even though it is a little ugly and there's a crack. And also this uh, uh, metal bar that sticks out right here. It's like the distance sensor measure, whatever, whatever you'd call it. I honestly don't know the real name for it, but that actually was snapped off, which I believe that might have something to do with the crack. Maybe if someone pulled too hard on it or if it just happened to hit something, uh, and just ripped out and just cracked it right along here. That could have been the thing to do it, I'm not sure. Uh, I know nothing else really about the history of this camera. But yeah, it is cracked right here and kind of along here and you can see uh, that it's glued together around the sensor ring area. So it's a little sketch, but it works fine. And honestly, I'm not worried about it as long as it works. So that's one of the major things that's wrong with it because cracked housing is never good. And it's also missing one of the XLR covers, which again, I'm not super worried about that. Uh, because it doesn't affect any sort of quality or uh, capabilities of this camera. But everything else on this camera actually works perfectly fine, just like it should, and that is awesome. So that is basically a rundown of the $375 FS100U cheapest cinema camera on the internet. Now, I'm definitely gonna make more videos about this camera uh, with more test footage and uh, more information on it. So stay tuned for that and definitely subscribe. This is more of an introduction of this camera that I just purchased. So yeah, I am gonna show some test footage actually in just a minute here. So definitely stay tuned to see what this camera is capable of. 
uh, with the first few days of owning it. This is the first test footage I shot with it. Uh, so it's definitely taken a lot of getting used to. Uh, I usually film with my EOS R, which is, you know, just a simple DSLR. Uh, that's what I'm used to recording with. So all these dials and buttons and stuff like that, definitely a lot to get used to. Uh, but so far, this is a really intuitive and a really great camera. I really love holding it, shooting with it and all that. And the thing about this, the thing about all cinema cameras is that because of how heavy they are, I'm not saying this is super heavy, but it's a lot heavier than a regular DSLR. And because of that, the camera shake and like the handheld footage you get from it just looks more professional. Like the added weight slows everything down and just gives it that really good like cinematic handheld look. And honestly, that's like the type of look I've been searching for since I started using a camera. Cause with most DSLR cameras or like camcorders that I've used back in the day, they're so small and so light that it just, everything shakes so much. And it's just the little jitters that cinema cameras don't have. It just changes the look of everything and just makes everything look so much more professional. Even if it's shot handheld, it looks professionally handheld, if you know what I'm talking about. That honestly is the, the biggest thing I've noticed so far and the thing that I love about this the most, because I love handheld footage. I just don't like the small jitters that like DSLRs and mirrorless cameras have. So that's the main thing I love about this so far, right off the bat. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you some test footage with it. Um, but again, stay tuned. I'm gonna have more videos about this camera in the future. So stay tuned, subscribe. And yeah, let's get into some test footage with the Sony FS100U. So yeah, here it is, the FS100U cinema camera. And also have a vintage lens on there. It's a 28 millimeter F2.8 Vivitar lens for the Canon FD mount. And I'm on manual focus right now. It's actually pretty far away from me. So I really hope the focus is correct. Uh, if you notice that it's off or in the intro, if it was off, uh, sorry. I apologize, it's a little difficult to keep it focused, especially when it's like two arms lengths away from me. There's also no picture profile on right now. Uh, but anyways, yeah, so this is what it looks like. So either way, here is some test footage that I recorded with the Sony FS100U a few days ago, and I used Canon FD 50mm f1.4 lens for all this test footage. I don't know exactly what f-stop it was at or like any of the settings really, I just kind of took it out and started shooting with it. With a custom like S-Log2 type of profile I saw on a YouTube video, it's like a whole custom profile for this camera that like matches S-Log2 on like the A6300s and A7 cameras. So I just kind of adjusted that, uh, what they said in the video. So yeah, I'll link that video in the description if I remember, if not, remind me. But either way, here's some test footage with the FS100. All right, that wraps it up. So this is a great camera. I'm definitely gonna make more videos about it. This is mostly just an introduction, letting you guys know that I bought this camera. Let me know what you wanna see. I'm definitely gonna make a should you buy in 2020 video about this. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, 
and stay tuned for that and more content about the FS100. Either way, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you go down, subscribe, and hit the like button, and I'll see you in the next video.